It's been an exciting two weeks on Joe Millionaire. If you want to catch up, this video is for you. It's been an exciting two weeks. So we had the parent visits, right? That was really interesting. And then we had the declarations from the women and then some one-on-one -on -one dates, which were really revealing, as you saw. So we are down to two women for Steven, two women for Kurt, and it's kind of exciting, right? All our predictions came true for the most part, although Kala is still there. Okay, so let's go back to the family visits. That was really fun. So Kurt's visit was first. The girls were really excited to see him on the work site. I thought that was really neat that they took him to see how he works, an example of a job site and kind of what his job entails. And then that was super cute that he had that concrete slab for them to put their handprints in. <laughs> That was really sweet. That was adorable. So the girls kind of fell for him a little more that day. And then when they got to his parents' house, that was fun too to see how the girls chose to spend their time, right? Mom, dad, not really investing at all, right? You know, some of the girls that are really Team Steven, they don't need to talk to his parents. I mean, they want to be polite and kind, but they want to give the women that are generally interested in Kurt time with his parents. So... Kala sat down with his mom and hit it off, chat, 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 and Kurt was like, oh, that's great, but I would have been like, man, she's never that way with me. What do I need to do for crying out loud, it's been two months, for her to start talking to me and invest in me and want to get to know me and be vulnerable with me? So I would have been hurt if I were him and genuinely puzzled about what is so hard. And then mom was challenging Kurt when they did their, you know, family recap. Are you trying to get to know her? Like, what are you doing to kind of propel the relationship? And I think their energy was so awkward that it was a lot for Kurt to ask questions. And he did, of course, when they were on dates, you know, before this. But she is so genuinely awkward. She makes the whole date awkward. And I think that that's really why he couldn't ask more. I think it was her that just laid the awkward ground <laughs> work from the beginning. So Carolyn's chat with the parents was revealing because mom even said at the end, do you not see your last relationship in Carolyn and Kurt, of course, because this is just a subconscious draw between the two of them, right? They actually don't have anything. They literally don't have anything connecting them except that subconscious energy chemistry draw. And he was like, nope, but it gave him something to think about. I was so thrilled that mom said that. I mean, the rest of us can read Carolyn's energy right away. Manipulative, withholding, controlling, very, this is what I want, not what she can offer. Hardly ever talks about her son, talks about her ex-husband more than her son. And with what we see, right, it's all edited. But I think it's really super cool that mom picked up on that. I think it was a little confusing for Kurt when mom said how much she liked Kayla, but I would have liked her too if she'd talked to me like that. And then Amber was really sweet, but Amber's not team Kurt. So I think it's cute that Amber got along so well with Kurt's dad, but that, you know, isn't going to make a difference. Whitney, I thought it was curious too that the family said, I don't see any chemistry there, but she's super cool. Well, she is. She's fun. She's bubbly. No surface there. No in-depth conversation. No connecting. And of course, this week we found out why. Yeah, so I think it was really neat that she had such a good time. But this is about finding your person, not just having a nice date process for a few months, at least for the guys. So I wonder, did the producers explain to her what this show was all about? it's all about or did she just say okay maybe I'll meet somebody and just by chance I'll decide I want to settle down she knew all along she didn't want to settle down well Annie was there Annie got along well with everybody yes she does I thought you know the family really liked her but she's team Steven and then of course Amanda I thought it was really neat that her brother Kurt's brother picked up on the fact that Amanda was always keeping touch with Kurt around the room during that visit. And he actually said, every man wants a woman to look at him like the way Amanda looks at Kurt, right? They are so connected. They have such a draw and it was funny. I saw Kurt actually leave 
Carolyn in the kitchen and come over um, and check in with some of the other girls. That was really cool. Okay, so we're off to Steven's farm. Kurt's got a lot to think about. I can't wait for the guys to talk because, you know, Steven's on board with, with everything we're all thinking, right? He can, he's tracking. He gets it. Okay, so Steven's house, Steven's farm. Love it that he drove up on the tractor. Love it that he had to coach his family. Okay, let's take off the Rolexes and park the big trucks. And it's nice, too, that he was in a modest enough house that he could really take the girls home to his place even though, you know, he said it was his dad's. So, you know, that was a lie. He'll have to <laughs> reveal later. But I think that's so neat that he got to take them someplace real. So did Kurt, you know, to a family home. So they didn't have to fabricate something. I mean, if if Stephen lived in something really elaborate, they, I mean, they would have had maybe a brother's home or a cousin's home or someone else's they would have just had to borrow because, you know, you can't take them someplace too elaborate. So I thought it was fantastic how that worked out. I loved it how when... <laughs> The family was interacting and talking to all the girls and Carolyn on this date, because she's Team Kurt, is off to the side, not talking to anybody, <laughs> you know, the whole time because, you know, she doesn't need to. I mean, her mission is not to make friends, have a good experience. Her intention in this whole process to get a man, manipulate a man, contain a man, marry a rich man, right? Yep, so that didn't apply at all to Stephen's date. <laughs> Annie, who is the most promising match for Stephen, she has a crush on him, he has a crush on her. They're getting more and more connected as time goes on. His whole family really loved her. Stephen's mom even said how much she liked Annie and could see them together. What was funny, though, is when Annie finally got alone with Stephen's father, she kept interrupting him. He would finally start talking, she'd interrupt. He'd start talking, she'd interrupt. I'm like, girl, are you nervous or what? <laughs> you know better. She said beauty queen training. Like she knows how to listen, how to speak, how to carry on. And so I thought, oh my gosh, this is adorable. Are you really that nervous about meeting his father? Because I think dad was pretty comfortable with all these beautiful women. I mean, that's intimidating for anybody, right? To have all these strangers at your home. You're lying. You're pretending. You're trying to support your son. He, I mean, they all had a big load to carry that day. They had to be so mindful of what they said. So I thought that was a really neat conversation. And I think that the conversation with Whitney and Steven in the billiard room was really powerful too because Whitney revealed a lot bigger clues and I'm like, girl, why didn't you reveal some of this stuff weeks ago? Why are you just telling him that you don't want to get married? Why are you just telling him that this farm, this small town isn't for you? Why are you just telling him that you want to travel the world? Why are you just telling him about your lifestyles, hopes, and dreams? I mean, I know you're here to just have a fun experience and not find somebody. I mean, we learned that this week, right? Week eight, yeah. <laughs> but when she was having that conversation in the builder, billiard room, it was week seven. Why are, have you not revealed any of this important information before? Steven's starting to put it together, but he wants to have fun with someone and wants to have someone that fits in with his family, and she totally would. They do have a great time together, but they are not on the same page, and he has known that, and he has just chosen not to let her go because he thinks she's kind of cool. Well, she is, but she's not your wifey, which is what you're looking for. So Annie, this is a riot. She says before the date even starts, talk about withholding information. We are just hearing that she's got severe allergies. <laughs> hey, being outside, trees, like what? You are dating a farmer. You have chosen out of the two guys. You've chosen Stephen. He not only lives on a farm, he owns a farm. It's not like he goes to a farm and works and comes home. He lives on a farm. Like <laughs> You are going to be around the animals, the crops, the hay. Like You are going to be in the thick of it. What? And I don't think she's even told him. She just told us. She just told the camera. What the heck? This is like potentially deal-breaking stuff. And she took double her allergy meds that day, so she looked good and she seemed to feel fine, which is great. It all just It just honestly comes down to the severity of these allergies. But again, something that needed to be mentioned and thought about weeks ago, right? Okay, Kala on the date chatting, having fun, but 
Kala being herself, withholding, not a lot of sharing. Not a lot going on with Kala on Stephen's date, even though he really likes her. I think, I don't, I don't think they even showed any like private time that those two had together. Amanda was pulled aside by Stephen, so that was nice that they had a moment. Amber's the kind of woman that will get along with anybody's family. She's super sweet, intelligent, nurturing, caring, has a really nice laid back energy, which is what Stephen loves about her, but also can't stand about her. She just cannot let her hair down and have a good time. So um, Amber had a great time with his parents and then he had a nice chat with her. But again, no spark, no sizzle, no fun. No, I mean, she's gorgeous, but he just doesn't connect with her and that spark of a way that he wants to. And it's not just chemistry, it's humor, playfulness, spontaneity. And so they get back to the manor, it's elimination time. This is the end of week seven. I think it's adorable that the guys are like, we're not ready to make a decision. And of course they were, they knew they wanted to get you know rid of Amber, but they their heads were spinning and they had so much to process and of course then, you know, knowing the women had so much to process, I think it was just so nice that the day they get home from these monumental visits that they don't have to go right into elimination. And the guys just need to talk through stuff together. But it was interesting, at the party, Martin announces, hey, now the women get to declare their feelings and choose who they want to pursue. And then the women got excited about that, which I don't know why, because everyone knows how somebody feels about, you know, everyone knows like Cal and Whitner are on the fence. Everyone knows what team everyone else is playing on. But the women were really excited to make a declaration. It puts a little power in them, their stance, their feelings. They get to declare them out loud so the men know for sure and the men can start pursuing them more readily. So now we're at week eight and then Martin says, pack up your stuff. You're going on dates and then you're going to your separate rooms, which is fantastic because the women can't process together anymore. They're not going to get an artificial sense like through another woman's telling of the story or the dates about how things are really going. So that kind of, that might breed some more insecurities in the women, but it can also alleviate a lot of insecurities because they're not hearing about how great Carolyn's date was or how great Kala's date was. They also don't know though, who has broken up, who's left, who's been eliminated. So I think that makes it hard. I think it would take some of the pressure off if the women knew oh, there's only three left, there's only four left, there's only five left, there's only two that like Steven left. So it'll be interesting to see how this kind of, you know, flows out. So I loved the individual day set, so important. I wish they would have had more before this point because the truth is they would have been able to pick which guy they wanted and have more elimination sooner and caused less pain and less hurt because all the women have to do is sit and think about these guys. The men are doing the same thing and they have just a different kind of pressure, right? So more information sooner would have really helped both sides kind of make their decisions and move ahead and get with the right person sooner and really dive in to see if there's a true connection there or just attraction. So Annie was the first one to declare her feelings. She walked in and said, Kurt, I think you're amazing. Steven, I pick you um, because you're wonderful. And that's all she said. I'm like, you had this chance to tell Steven how you feel about him. Doesn't really say anything at all. Hugs him and leaves the room. I thought that was hilarious. Whitney was funny too because I think the reason now that she's told us that she's not into commitment. And she did tell Steven this too. I'm not in this for commitment. I don't wanna get engaged. I don't wanna have children right away. But now that we are all clear on that, I think that is precisely the reason she can't choose between the guys at this point in week eight because she's there for fun. She's there for laughs. Of course she likes both guys. That makes complete sense. But if she was in it for more serious reasons like the other women, with the exception of Kala are, it's a lot easier to decide then, right? You're really focusing on what you like about each guy, reading their energy, reading the mutual attraction, and really reasoning through what you like about them and not just going on attraction. These women have ton hours in a day to really think about, are we a good match? Should we stay together? Should I pursue this? But Whitney, yeah, she's just in this for laughs, so of course she can't decide. That makes complete sense. So she laughed it off, walks out of the room. Kala, this was fascinating because she came in and actually said to the guys, 
I'm genuinely confused. I really care about both of you. And I didn't realize that I was holding back till you both told me. And so maybe I should start opening up. Okay, well, it's week eight. The guys have been saying this to you for weeks now. <laughs> they said it in front of your family. They said it in front of their family. And so she walks out of the room and they go, wow, she really opened up. And I'm like, she just said this, this stuff the other girls normally say. So that was huge for Calla, but really, do you want someone that's admitted now she's holding on to a lot of baggage from her past? She's now realizing that she's carrying it. Is she going to deal with it? Is she going to try to process it and get help? Is she going to move on so she can have love with someone else? Or is she going to be walked around in this closed box while you watch her become vulnerable and open with other people like the, a mom or a sister or a friend, but then hold everyone else at bay in your life, including you. You don't know that. If Steven picks her, he has no idea if she's going to eventually open up. He, he just will literally never know that. Carolyn, um, yeah, that was just dry and blah and since day one, one of her cute coined phrases, since day one, we've had this, you know, fantastic connection. She repeats the same freaking controlling manipulative words over and over, which is part of her like hypnotizing control stuff she tries to do to Kurt, whatever. So everyone knew what she was going to say. So nothing earth shattering there. Amanda, that was adorable how she walked in and apologized to Steven that she was Team Kurt and then made goo-goo eyes on <laughs> Kurt. They're just mad about each other. They're such a great couple. It's fantastic. I was so excited for them. And then they, of course, after they kiss and part ways, you know, he says avocado and she says it back. I just love that code word. And I kind of wish she hadn't told the other women what it meant because that takes some of the special intimacy out of it, but also hurts the other women. Um, I love them together. They're fantastic. Now they get to go on intimate dates. So the women now have moved, they're packed up, they get to go on one-on-one -on -one dates. And this is brilliant because it's about time that these people got one-on-one -on -one time to really dive into things. These are longer dates. No one's going to interrupt and they can really be open. So it's time for the one-on-one -on -one dates and I'm so excited for everyone about this. They need to know more. They need to have a deeper connection. They have this huge decision looming over their heads. They're starting to feel that pressure. And I think if they're not certain, they're really feeling the pressure. And honestly, they just need more time together. They need that time to connect and the threat of being interrupted is removed so they can really let their hair down, talk and stare into each other's eyes, experience things together, get into interesting conversation. Brilliant. So the first date was Annie. And they had that lovely barn date, which I think is funny. I want to know how her, how her allergies did in that environment. She seemed fine, though, so maybe her allergies really aren't that bad. I'm just worried for Stephen because if he picks her in the end, after this huge process, he could end up alone because she literally cannot physically function on a farm. A lovely romantic date, incredible conversation, the tethered hot air balloon ride. That was really cool. That was a really, really lovely romantic date. I'm so glad they had that time together. Whitney went out with Steven. They went roller skating. That was the perfect date. They laughed and had a good time and just <laughs> were themselves and falling and chatting and having fun. I'm just really excited for Steven to continue to learn more about Whitney because he's got to get through his thick head that, yeah, she's a lot of fun, but she's not ready to be a wife yet, be in a relationship, be committed, and she sure as heck not moving there. So... <laughs> I just, I'm like, come on, Steven, you can figure this out. Put it together. Two plus two is four. <laughs> Carolyn date. Oh, it's so torturous to watch, isn't it? Oh my gosh. Like I just, he does not stand up to her. It drives me bananas. He said, and this is editing too, maybe. He only said one time to her, I'm asking you this stuff because I need to know this is a real concern. You are not validating me. She kept Another little coined, repetitive phrase she always wants to say, well, if you want to sit in that fear, she keeps trying to emasculate him and put him into this like pressure box of, you need to man up and you need to show me how strong you can be. No, he doesn't. 
He's asking you legit questions that if he wasn't asking, America would be shaking him and knocking on his door saying, come on, Kurt, get it out of her. She, she just will not. She's just withholding information like crazy, which in my opinion is lying, right? She's not saying, again, anything about her son. Mentioned her ex-husband, nothing about the kid. He asked her if she wanted to have a start a family with him, and she was like, I answered this already. Well, he wouldn't be asking again if he felt secure in your answer, felt reassured, and felt certain about how you wanted to proceed. He did verbalize to you that this is where we're going to have to live, and I don't know if that's good for me. She just sat there. Well, if you're going to be scared or you're going to be fearful and you're going to operate that way and operate out of fear, done talking about her. Yeah. The truth is the only reason they're connected, they literally have nothing. They have nothing in common. They have no actual connection. They have no intimacy. It's just the subconscious draw that we all have to certain people. That's all it is. I mean, they will not make it two seconds past this show, except that he'll be kind enough to try. And she will want her Instagram to, to live long enough and maybe get some brand deals and then they'll end it. Because when she finds out he doesn't have money, but after a while, he is going to be so tired of being manipulated, cut to the quick, being emasculated, being controlled. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Plus, of course, he loses his whole business. He has to pick up and move his business. So he loses his crew, loses his current contracts. I mean, it would take forever for that to transition and for them to actually live together. So if they make it, it's just because he can't, they can't move in together. So he won't know about how awful and cagey it will be to live with Carolyn. Date with Kala. Wow, he went all out for her, didn't he? The corn maze, the romantic dinner, then Easton Corbin being there. And she was like actually expressive. Wow. And chatty. And again said, you know, I just didn't realize how closed up I was. Okay, that's great. But are you going to open up now? Or are you just going to keep talking about how closed you've been? Because I didn't see them getting into any conversation about the future, hopes, dreams, kids, nothing. So I know he's really excited about her, but they are just not far enough along for him to pick her. <laughs> and he comes forward and says, you know what? I just can't live on your farm because of my allergies. <laughs> he can't pick Kala. They just don't know enough about each other. I mean, we saw in the previews, right? They're getting rings out. These men have to pick out rings and maybe they don't have to. But they're being presented with the opportunity to pick out rings. He doesn't know anything about Kala. Right? Except that from what she said to his mom, Kurt's mom, which Stephen didn't hear, and what Kala said in front of her parents. Okay, so what was that, 10 minutes that he learned more about her in front of the parents? And then he saw how goo goo eyed and grateful and happy she was on the date with him, that special date Stephen planned for her. But again, all he learned was, oh, when I buy her things or I plan special romantic things, she's going to love it. That's not anything a clue to sustaining a successful relationship. She even says, I'm head over boots for you. And all she says back is, oh, that's so sweet, thanks. <laughs> Kala, that's a clue. You say something back when someone expresses their feelings. And that was really, honestly, a big statement for Steven because he doesn't profess his feelings much. He's very expressive and communicative, but he doesn't profess. Amber, that was the cutest date, them having that horseback ride, but when they got off the horses, it was constant serious talk, and I thought it was a hoot how they edited it, <laughs> looping it back to more and more and more serious. Amber's the sweetest thing ever, right? Intelligent, composed, nurturing, loving, serious, um, and I think that Stephen loves all those qualities. There's just no spark, no chemistry, playfulness, spontaneity there. And it, he just doesn't want to build a life without those qualities in it. So the, the goodbye was super hurtful, awkward. I really felt for both of them because he was hurting too. But she, yeah, it was time. She had to go because if he kept her longer, she would have been hurt so much more. Whitney, I loved it that she was just honest with Kurt. I have a better connection with Steven, you know, it doesn't make sense, we have nothing in common, but I choose Steven. <laughs> breaks up with Kurt, Calla breaks up with Kurt, Kurt's hurt, but I, these women get points for honesty. I mean, really seriously, it's, it's time to declare who you like. Calla was so far removed and withholding that 
she couldn't choose because she wasn't invested. I don't know how in week eight you are not invested, but okay, you've got a lot of stuff and baggage to sort through. Hopefully after the show, you really get to work on that because she's opened the door. She's realizing stuff, right? After a lot of repetition, she finally said, oh my gosh, maybe I do have baggage and maybe I'm bringing it into this relationship and maybe I need to start opening up. That's really all it takes for somebody to realize that they really do need to invest in the healing process. So Calla dumped Kurt, Whitney dumped Kurt, and I love it. They were honest. They're finally forcing themselves to make a choice, and it's about damn time. So I'm glad for Kurt because I'm just sorry those girls knew they didn't stand a chance with Amanda and Carolyn there. Why would you continue to date Kurt under any of those circumstances? He's not going to choose you. He just literally can't. So I think it's great that they stepped away from him. I loved how Stephen went right over there, talked to Whitney, ended it, and then sent her on her way. Um, that needed to happen. They That literally would have not worked for five minutes on the outside, even though they have fun together. That's a friendship thing, right? When you just have fun and don't have any actual intimacies and any actual conversation or depth of connection, you're just playing. You're just having fun, which is great. You need that friendship element of a relationship, but it can't. It can't. It's not sustainable in a romantic relationship. You need to have fun and all these other things. Next week is going to be incredible because now Stephen has to choose between Annie and Calla, and I'm afraid he's going to end up alone because he can't choose Calla. He sort of has to choose Annie. Plus, he's mad about her. But again, once they get home, does she want a farm life and can she physically handle that? So I'm worried for him. I don't want him to end up alone. I want him to find somebody after going through all of this effort and sacrifice. He's learned a lot. He's really grown as a man, as a person, and that's fantastic. But I do want him to have love that lasts after this. Kurt has Carolyn and Amanda. Oh my gosh, is he going to be torn right up until the last minute because he looks crazy about Amanda. She's so much better for him. The mystery in that subconscious pull to Carolyn is going to be so hard to break. He's just going to not want to. But I hope that somebody on production and Steven sits him down and says, dude, have you written a pros and cons list about Carolyn? What you really know about Carolyn? What you really like about Carolyn? Because when Carolyn's best friend asked you what you liked about her, you didn't have a thing to say. And we, we don't see anything. We don't hear her actually having conversation, revealing literally anything to you. Here are my hobbies, my hopes, my dreams, how many more kids I want to have, the kind of, you know, life I want to, talking about her business to him. Like, is she just going to give all that up and live on the money Kurt doesn't have? That's probably what she's hoping for because she only talked about her business to Kurt's father. So Amanda is crazy about Kurt and sincerely so. His financial situation will mean nothing to her. They're both ambitious, driven, career people that are loving, caring, want a family. They have a million things in common. Amanda would fit in anywhere. Kurt could take her anywhere. They'll be best friends, lovers, partners, match made in heaven. And if for some completely mad reason he chooses Carolyn, which he isn't, he's going to choose Amanda. But if he did, what I'm hoping is that after the breakup with Carolyn, he calls Amanda, which I never say that, but I really hope he does because they are such a good match. And he can move to her. He can. So if she wants to stay by her family and he loves her family, right, maybe they do want to live in the middle or live by one or both of the families. I think, you know, that could be really spectacular. I mean, Amanda can move wherever, too. She's an entrepreneur. She does not have to live anywhere in particular. So I'm really glad they don't have that pressure to of having to live in a certain place. So cheers to these guys. They've been honorable. They've maintained their character, their composure. They're really doing their best to put their best foot forward. Kurt just needs to sit down and have a sensible talk with himself. He has chemistry with Amanda. It's not like he's giving up, you know, chemistry or connection or that pull with Amanda if he chooses her. So why not choose her? But he needs to reassure himself. Otherwise, he will have doubts for a bit, not long, but for a bit at the end. When Carolyn's out of his life, the just relief he's going to feel, the burden of trying to impress her and please her and do the right Carolyn thing is, is going to be just a tremendous release. And he's going to thoroughly be able to enjoy it, man. It's going to be blissful. 
So I can't wait to see what happens next week. They're going to have to profess their affection and love for someone. They're going to have to make a ring decision. Their girls are going to have on their white dress. I can't wait to see what happens. So talk to you next week. It's going to be a nail biter. See you later.